In the calm stillness that comes just before dawn, when everyone is tucked away fast asleep, the harbour is humming with excitement as fish is unloaded from ships to be loaded onto Henry's train that the fishermen call the Flying Kipper. Henry has pulled his train proudly for many years and knows the way almost by instinct. The villagers set their clocks by Henry's whistle, which echoes through the valley at the same time each morning. As the sun comes up, Henry makes his final triumphant descent into the fishing village, returning to the sheds afterwards for a well-deserved rest. Henry found peace and solitude with the flying kipper, but truth be told, the heavy trains, long journeys and his age were beginning to catch up with him. As the weeks went by, he was feeling quite worn out which drew the attention of Sir Topham Hatt, who came to visit him one evening before the next kipper was due. Henry, your parts are worn, he said. We must send you to the works to be mended. But who will take the flying kipper? Henry asked sadly. Arthur will help while you're away. He knows the route better than the other engines. Henry felt uncertain about letting another engine take his kipper, but he was exhausted. Arthur was delighted when he heard the news and was determined not to fail. I hope I can pull the kipper as well as Henry, he said. It must be exciting to go flying along the line. Arthur arrived at the harbour for his first run the next morning. He was expecting a friendly greeting, but the trucks were blunt and rude. We want Henry, not a red monster, they yelled. Arthur was hurt. The trucks were hard to move. And the journey was very bumpy and cumbersome. When he finally arrived at the fishing village the next morning, Arthur didn't feel triumphant like Henry at all. The next few runs did not go much better. The trucks remained stubborn and made Arthur feel most unwelcome. Henry was due to return soon and Arthur felt that he had failed. Sir Topham Hat will never let me take the kipper out again and Henry will be disappointed. Oh dear. When Henry did return he came to see how Arthur had gotten on. Arthur wanted to give a good report, but he decided it was best to tell the truth. The trucks didn't like me at all, Arthur said. I don't think I'm worthy to pull the flying kipper. Henry smiled. When I first started pulling the flying kipper, Henry began, the trucks didn't like me either. Really? asked Arthur. Yes, they rode rough and made me want to give up, but I knew that the merchants in the villages were depending on me. So I struggled on and soon they learned to come quietly. You see, Henry continued thoughtfully, I was the only engine that didn't give up. Gordon tried, but he wanted to pull the express. James tried, but he complained and never returned. But you, Arthur, have made the effort day after day, and that is truly remarkable. Arthur simply beamed. If you would like to take the kipper more often, you will learn, and I will teach you. Arthur began to pull the flying kipper more and more, and each day the trucks grew fonder and fonder of him. To Henry, Arthur was a natural, and realizing his own age and exhaustion gave the kipper over to Arthur permanently. One morning, Henry came to see Arthur before he left for the kipper. Everything looks in order, Henry said. It's like see myself in my younger days, full of energy and excitement. Arthur suddenly looked concerned. What will you do now that I'm pulling the flying kipper? He asked. Oh, I don't know. I think I might share the express with Gordon from time to time. He's getting old too, but he never admit it. The two laughed together for a while, and soon it was time for Arthur to leave. 
Henry looked on as Arthur pulled the heavy van slowly but surely out of the sidings and felt that the kipper was in very good hands indeed.